As of the time that I'm making this video, there are 64 total songs that have been certified diamond by the Recording Industry Association of America. These are the tracks that have gone platinum 10 times over. Before I even saw the list, I knew I wanted to make a video ranking everything on it, but after I saw the list, I decided to recruit some help from a person that's very close to me. This is my girlfriend Elsa. They're a very talented, aspiring singer-songwriter, currently finishing up their final year at the Berklee College of Music. P.S. Elsa has a new song coming out today called Caroline. Feel free to check it out, I like it a lot. But with this list of Diamond songs, it's much more repetitive than I originally would have guessed. It's basically all tracks from the 21st century, there are musicians that take up at least three, four, or even five spots, and like I usually do with these kinds of ranking videos, I wanted to remove my own bias a little bit and account for different perspectives. So over the course of a four-hour spirited discussion, Elsa and I went through this list, I gave my rating of how much I like a song, Elsa gave their rating, and then we mutually decided on a rating for a sort of catch-all category of did the song achieve what they were aiming for? Does it feel iconic? Was it innovative for the artist? Or is it definitive for them in some way? Average out the perspective of some guy that rants about music on the internet, somebody who actually studies this stuff and can go much more into detail about theory and whatnot, and then both of those people trying to think more objectively, and this is what we came up with. First up, we have The Stinkers, the songs that we actively dislike and wish did not have as much success as they do. I've said it time and time again, Megan Trainer's All About That Bass genuinely makes the world a worse place to be. Blatantly anti-feminist, throws body positivity out the window while trying to champion that idea, and it's generally annoying, too. Believer by Imagine Dragons is an already stale rehash of Imagine Dragons, making yet another Imagine Dragons track, so yeah, it's not great. This one's funny. BB Rexa and Florida Georgia Lines Meant to Be has gone over 10 times platinum, and Elsa and I both had never heard it or heard of it before in our lives. We checked it out, thought it was generic trash, and it gets a special trophy for being the least recognizable track on this list. Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth See You Again is a nothing song. Extremely lazy, could have been made by anyone, and it owes all of its popularity to the massive IP that it's attached to, and a tragic event that it became the theme song for. Cruise by Florida Georgia Line just perpetuates the whole country music sucks idea. Sure, it's pretty catchy, but we're never gonna get to a place where singers like Yola can be appreciated by the mainstream when this formulaic pop disguised as country is what continues to sell. The coffee shop classic Hey Soul Sister by Train is almost impressively bad. It's cliche after cliche delivered in this absolute mess of a cheerful pop rock that borders on nauseating. Elsa and I are not automatically opposed to silly, faux, inspirational radio pop songs, but with something like Katy Perry's Roar, it wasn't the first time she did something exactly like that, which we will talk about later, and this one just reeks of hashtag girlboss energy a little bit too much. Demons is the least bad Imagine Dragons track that you'll find on this list, but that's not saying a whole lot. Maybe we were feeling extra bitter with this one, but Pharrell's Happy has this dystopian energy surrounding it. The instrumental is solid and you can dance to it, I mean, it's Pharrell after all, but the lyrics and message are excruciatingly contrived. Now moving into the territory of whatever. This next batch is stuff that we don't hate, but there are still negative feelings surrounding them. We felt bad having this perfectly okay song so low, but Havana is pretty corny and we think that it's gonna fade into obscurity far sooner than the heavy hitters that you'll see as we go on. Maroon 5 has some great pop songs, but Moves Like Jagger is not one of them. Between the use of Mick Jagger's name, that dreaded whistling, and the awkward, provocative nature of the song, this is one of the 2010's biggest examples of a track made by following trends. Post Malone's massive success is something that confuses me every day. We've got Rockstar and Congratulations back to back, 
back because in my eyes, virtually every track he's made over the last five years might as well be the same sleepy, melodic pop rap that serves the same purpose as elevator music. Next, we have Baby Shark by Pink Fong. While yes, it's Baby Shark, there's something commendable about this one being explicitly made for children, where a lot of the stuff that we've discussed so far probably should be for the same demographic, but it pretends like it's not. God's Plan by Drake is held up merely by that one memorable line and a pretty iconic music video. Besides those two aspects, the song itself blends in with everything else on Scorpion. Ed Sheeran's Perfect and Eminem's Not Afraid are two more examples of people who only got less interesting as their careers progressed. With these songs, it felt like deja vu for tracks from their catalogs that actually seemed fresh and exciting. Now we're entering territory of complete indifference. Either we think these inclusions are fine, or their status balanced out our distaste for them. Stressed Out by 21 Pilots is absolutely one of their lesser singles, but in the grand scheme of things, at least it's sort of unique. It might be cringy, corny, whatever you want to call it, but there is some authenticity here, and that's more than I can say for everything else thus far. Pretty solid production on Post Malone and Sway Lee's Sunflower, the melody sticks out more than Post's usual stuff, but it's still nothing revolutionary. It took us a second to remember Katy Perry and Juicy J's Dark Horse, but this is fine. The combination of glamorous pop singer featuring trap rapper and an EDM drop instead of a chorus sounds obnoxious, but it ends up being rather harmless. Okay. Okay, neither of us like Radioactive by Imagine Dragons, but it's purely up this high because of the absolute chokehold this song had on society for a while. That kind of fake, explosive rock where there seems like there's grandiosity, but you can't actually find it anywhere, became a staple of the music industry for years because of this song. Counting Stars by One Republic is something I enjoy more than I think I should. It checks all the subpar boxes of your stereotypical songs that get white people turnt track, but I don't know, there's something I can't hate about it. I apologize in advance for this one. On Paper is Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke, Pharrell, and T.I. egregiously terrible and problematic? Yes. Is Robin Thicke a bad person? Yes. But if I was at a wedding or something and the DJ was playing every song that I've mentioned thus far, musically speaking, I'd rather bop around to this than anything else. Neither of us particularly like Sad by X, and we think it will continue to have a strong cult following, but no big universal mark on the cultural landscape. That's What I Like helped kick off a new era for Bruno Mars, but he seems a little too comfortable here. I don't have any serious issues with it, but there are no risks being taken on this song. Again, this is not something we love by any means, but you've got to give it to the Chainsmokers, Halsey, and Closer for this emphatically boring statement. This thing helped them dominate the airwaves for a bit, and it's really wild how this moody EDM pop can take over the world without putting in any effort. Major Lazer's Lean On is mainly getting points for being the truest form of anything resembling EDM on this list, and we did everything in our power to put them above the chain smokers. Now we've got songs where we understand the hype, even if we're not choosing to play them. Janelle Monet is absolutely wasted on Fun's We Are Young, the lyrics are pandering, it has that undeserved self-importance that's pretty off-putting, but I've heard much worse radio hits. Elsa and I's thing with Taylor Swift's 1989 as a whole, and especially Shake It Off, is that we can give her props for expertly crafting pop music that was always going to sell a trillion copies, but that doesn't take away how cold and corporate this feels. John Legend's All of Me is a very simple piano ballad where the lyrics feel forced, but I've always enjoyed his voice, and Elsa would like you to know that points were deducted from this one because it was written for Chrissy Teigen. Bruno Mars's second installment on this list comes in the form of When I Was Your Man. While his earlier singles were probably more memorable, this one strikes me as more balanced. However, something's always been off to me about the production here. If Macklemore didn't win those Grammys and he was just this passionate rapper making songs about things that nobody else in hip hop talked about, would he have the reputation he has now? Thrift Shop is goofy, but the hook is an earworm, and the idea could be much worse. Now we've made it up to songs that we like but don't quite love yet. This one's for the memes, folks. 
for the memes. While I know it didn't get the best initial reception from old school Ed Sheeran fans, Shape of You is a well-made pop song. The very base of everything, that melody, is so minimalist, but what they choose to add and take away from it throughout the track keeps you interested. It would work far better as a Rihanna song like they originally planned, but Ed's is solid. The next two of these were Elsa and I having our most heated discussions throughout the whole list. I think Justin Bieber's Sorry was incredibly important for him being taken seriously as an artist as opposed to just the teen heartthrob that he started out as, and my lovely girlfriend thinks that it's mediocre. Elsa thinks that Eminem and Rihanna's Love the Way You Lie should legitimately be near the top of this list, which I think is absurd, it's like a silly soap opera in all the wrong ways, but they insist that the chorus hits hard, and it's one of the prime examples of how to make a rap song collaboration. However, we agreed that Just The Way You Are and Grenade by Bruno Mars exist in a similar filing cabinet in our brains. They're both cheesy and not the best songs in the world, but when it comes to the story and main thesis of a track, you know exactly what you're getting with these, and we think that they both inspired several copycat songs from other artists as time went on. Sam Smith's Stay With Me isn't fascinating by any means, but we think it has more personality than its piano ballad predecessors like All Of Me and When I Was Your Man, for instance. Entering the we like and or respect these a lot territory, it was a refreshing blast from the past to see Fetty Wap's Trap Queen on this list. So energetic, that refrain is unironically one of my favorite musical moments of the 2010s, and I miss that period of time time when This and My Way were some of the biggest songs in the country. This one was odd because Elton John's Something About the Way You Look Tonight and Candle in the Wind came as a package deal, and we agreed that the latter song holds a much bigger place in our hearts than the prior. If it was just Candle in the Wind, it would have moved up a few spots, but alas, it's not. Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran was the blueprint for a song like Perfect. It's funny how an artist can have the most popular song for couples to have their first dance to, and then decide to just make another one that fits the same exact mold. To be completely honest, we felt kind of indifferent to the actual music behind Despacito, but you cannot deny how absolutely massive this song was, and if this track helped open American eyes to more Latin musicians, then cool. I don't know if there's a better time capsule of a song than Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO. The structure of it is messy, the whole concept feels like something from another universe, let alone something from just a decade ago, but it's so much fun. The synths are legitimately great, all of the production has aged oddly well, I think, and recently two of my friends randomly did this at karaoke, and it was one of the funniest moments of my entire life. <laughs> Similarly, I Got a Feeling by Black Eyed Peas feels more like reliving a moment of nostalgia than something that's actually timeless on its own. But it's an indescribable feeling when the song comes on at the function after you haven't heard it for three years, and for whatever reason, you find yourself screaming the words, Mazel tov at the top of your lungs. In the complete opposite direction, Elsa made the point that Flowrida and T-Pain's Low is something that will live on forever in clubs and feel relevant no matter what. That chorus might be the closest thing to perfect that you'll find on this entire list. Just like how Thinking Out Loud was the blueprint for perfect, Katy Perry's Firework was the more compelling, authentic precursor to Roar. This one is bound to be controversial because it's so high on this list, but Jason Mraz's I'm Yours had one of the best scores for our third category. For years, it held the record for weeks spent on the Billboard charts. It's arguably the definitive guy with an acoustic guitar or ukulele song, and its imprint on media and society overrules what any music nerd might reject about it. Long before she made one of the greatest pop albums of the century, Carly Rae Jepsen released the enigmatic, unforgettable Call Me Maybe. 
Is this chorus repetitive and vapid? Sure, but I'm gonna compare it to how I can hear Playboy Cardi say jump out the house 17 times in a row and think that he's a genius because I love it every time. While this is nowhere near her best single, Lords Royals was a cutting critique of the idealistic pop scene that had been in control for years. The influence that this had on a more alternative, sarcastic, self-referential pop taking over is clear and pretty ironic when you think about it. But years before anyone was truly ready for it, Lady Gaga's poker face was inviting electro synth pop with a bold, artistic message onto the radio. That futuristic aesthetic that she brought around 2008, 2009 was next level. Elsa and I both think that Pumped Up Kicks by Foster the People has had a strange reputation over the years. That quote unquote secret message has been revered by people and then dismissed missed once everyone realized what the track was about, but in general, I think it's cool that something this dark, but also playful, was such a hit at the time. Now entering the final tier of being loved by us and or holding a legendary status, the fastest song in music history to go diamond is the poster child of the future of meme music. Old Town Road is just what the music industry needed in 2019, a complete change of pace from the boring, low effort, same old stuff that we talked about earlier, and an introduction to to bizarre, novelty musical crossovers that proved that anything is possible in the age of the internet. While trying to look through a critical lens, Miley Cyrus's Party in the USA is probably my least favorite track in the upper echelon of this list, but my lovely girlfriend started playing that guitar riff for me and reminded me of the unadulterated joy that the opening verse brings and I saw the error of my ways. I can remember the exact moment I heard Sicko Mode for the first time, a truly anthemic Travis Scott banger with this eclectic beat change halfway through and one of Drake's very best features. This song rules. It was a magical feeling to watch something this experimental go number one. You are only lying to yourself if you say that Justin Bieber and Ludacris's Baby is not one of the catchiest songs you've ever heard. Is it a good song? I don't really know how to answer that, but there's a good reason why I can still recite every lyric, even though I haven't listened to it in a long time. September 12th, 2017. I was packed like sardines in the basement of a club in Boston for a Brockhampton concert. Cardi B's Bodak Yellow played over the speakers before they came on, and the hype in that room, months after it was released, yielded one of the best concert moments of my life. I absolutely think any hate on this song stems from sexism, because it's one of the most charismatic, exciting rap songs of the century. And while all the love in the world to the OGs that came before Cardi, I think this track opened the floodgates of women succeeding in rap, like Megan, Doja Cat, Saweetie, etc. Now for the very best of the best, while his career has deteriorated over time, Eminem's Lose Yourself is a bona fide classic. He sounds hungry from start to finish, no pun intended, the flows are immaculate, the message inspirational, and it's a must-have in the hip-hop canon. My personal favorite song on this list that I think is a 10 out of 10 perfect pop track Somebody That I Used to Know by Gautier and Kimbra has everything you could want in a hit. Beautiful harmonies, a wide range of influences on the instrumental, production that can go from delicate and precise to explosive and moving, and the way the lyrics are framed through conversation is special. One of the only songs to get a perfect 10 in the third category, you could write a book on Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars's Uptown Funk. While Elsa and I both like but don't quite love this track, it's irreplaceable. Modern enough to top the Billboard Hot 100 for 14 weeks, but retro enough to earn its cool, funky, soulful vibe. I don't care how overplayed it was, it's an amazing song. This is gonna be a hot take for being up so high, but I think it's awesome that The Hills by the Weekend is one of the biggest songs ever made. We've got this suspenseful nightmare aesthetic that's also very sexy, I'm obsessed with the percussion during the verses, and that beat drop into that chorus? In my eyes, that's what music is all about. I think some of you will be shocked that this isn't even higher than it already is. Stronger by Kanye West is remarkably important for evolving hip-hop as a whole. 
the stadium status, the pervasive nature of it. It's one of the very best instrumentals across his whole discography, and quite possibly the most iconic use of sampling in rap ever, and not to mention those exhilarating verses and the sing-along chorus. Again, something that doubles as high art and perfect pop music, Lady Gaga's bad romance being as big as it was and still is shows me that good things can happen in the music world. Between the enticing intro, the twisted, passionate lyrics in the verses, the seductive nature of the pre-chorus, one of the best choruses of all time, yes I said all time, the animalistic post-chorus, the bridges going back into the final chorus, it's an unbelievably inventive, gorgeous piece of music. And what we felt like we had no choice putting as our number one Diamond Certified song ever, it's Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Take every compliment that I've uttered thus far, and it can be applied to this otherworldly, distinctive track. A six minute long opera, based on the legend of Faust, you basically get a bunch of different songs packaged as one that somehow flow effortlessly into one another. Freddie Mercury is an absolute madman for making this, and without being too corny, I think this serves as a constant reminder that art has no limits. I'm sure there's gonna be some kind spirited discussion in the comments about, well, everything here. The toll of joining said discussion is checking out my girlfriend's new song, thank you to them for helping with this video, and thanks for watching. Hey, thank you for watching that video. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.